Good afternoon, friends. It's Heather of Fish Puppy Farm. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. I know it's been a few days. It was a very busy morning and I'll insert some uh, footage here, but the kids and I went to um, a client's house to do a deck container um, project, get her all set up and what she wanted on her deck. And I think it turned out really great. Um, it was fun to work with them and you know, they were just troopers and those two turned a six hour job into a two hour job. So I was very, very grateful. <laughs> we had to haul 14 of these bags um, up and down some stairs. So I was really extra grateful that they were out there with me. So uh, I have a couple bags here because this is our garlic bed or was our garlic bed. And um, I need to flip this bed and put some stuff in it for the remainder of the season. Now it is the end of June and uh, we are into our hot season. So today it's a beautiful like 78 degrees Fahrenheit, but um, the last couple days we've been in the upper 90s, uh, close to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, close to 40 degrees Celsius. So uh, it's been very, very hot. So I have a few things chosen for this, but I don't know how it's going to go because um, these are things that that aren't necessarily loving the heat, but they'll do okay. With the exception of these uh, burgundy bush beans, they're totally fine in the heat. They're gonna do great. And I already have beans in the garden, but I'm gonna plant more because we love them. Now here is where things could get, could get interesting. So I'm gonna plant some cilantro, which we need, but also really loves to bolt. <laughs> I'm also going to plant some Paris Island romaine. This particular romaine tends to be slow bolt for me. And then we're gonna put in some little gem lettuce. I have two packets here. Uh, both of these tend to not bolt right away. So I'm going to um, pull up the few weeds that are in here. There are two sweet potato slips in here, so I'm gonna bury those deeply, uh, but put fresh soil in here because it's all really sunken down. It hasn't been topped off in quite a while. And so we'll put fresh soil in here. Um, I'll sow all the seeds. Then we'll put the irrigation back in. And then I'm going to rig up some shade because I think that's the only way these things are not going to bolt on me. So um, I'll have to get some shade cloth. We'll hammer in some stakes and it'll just be a very basic structure, but it'll be enough to give them um, a chance. <laughs> which is all I'm really asking for. So uh, let me gather the rest of my goodies and we'll get started on this project. there we go. Uh, like I said, it's not the best structure or anything, but it'll do. In fact, it kind of looks like a kid's play structure at this point. <laughs> 
but I sewed two rows of lettuce, a row of cilantro. I uh, sewed a quadrant of beans. And the reason I didn't put anything over here is those are two sweet potato slips and they're doing well and they will start taking over this bed. So I wanna give them um, some room and they can twist their vines through the lettuces and stuff. That'll be no problem. So this will stay on to hopefully provide just enough shade for the lettuces and the cilantro to not bolt um, too quickly. Okay, since it's almost the end of June, I thought I'd give you guys a quick uh, garden tour. Just this front garden, just the veggie garden, um, to uh, round out today's video. So, uh, let's start with the native pollinator bed. And, and don't mind all the garbage. This is from, again, we had to move out of our house and move back in. <laughs> all these boxes go to the farm, so we needed the, the cardboard. We've got it now. Uh, but the pollinator bed is looking good. It is all the seeds are starting to sprout. Those are the wildflower seeds that we put down. And yeah, everything's starting to settle in. So doing okay. Then we come over here to the first uh, veggie bed. These tomatoes are finally putting on some growth. They're looking nice and deep and green, really pretty. Um, the lettuce is done. Uh, in fact, I had to give some of it to the chickens because it bolted and it was just kind of bitter, but they don't mind bitter. Uh, we've got a basil in the middle there that's actually doing just fine. And this is celery and it's going to seed, but look, I'm so excited. That means I can actually grow celery. <laughs> I can take some of the more tender shoots down there. I really, really like celery. Uh, this is a very eaten up pepper and I don't think it's going to do much, but that's okay because over here is the pepper bed and I'm thrilled because it is for the first time, literally, looking good. Uh, many, many years of trying to grow peppers and I have, you know, a few here and there, but nothing really does very well. This, so these are kachuchas, which I've been excited about. These guys, the big guys here. And then we've got some, um, everything's labeled, believe it or not. We've got some peppers on that guy there, which is I think just a, a sweet banana pepper, but we got some peppers there. We've got some jalapenos back there. I'm just very, very happy. Uh, to see peppers and to see them, the plants looking good, looking healthy. This is what I usually struggle with. The sweet potatoes in their grow bags are looking healthy um, with a few exceptions, but that's okay. Even this pepper plant over here, this is a shishito putting on a bunch. We've got a bell pepper there. All those onions keep getting, they, they put a little bit of growth on and then they get eaten by rodents. So. It's all right. Uh, and then we've got some corn here, which is looking good. Of course, you've seen this bed. We just did that. This bed, still kind of a mess. Um, you can see right here, we've got Rudbeckia and Rudbeckia triloba and Comfrey. And these are perennials. They will stay there forever, hopefully continue to expand and grow, especially the Comfrey. These are the peonies, which are done for the year. And then all the brown stuff you see in here, the greenish brown, that's all the leaves from the daffodils, which I can't completely pull up yet because some of them are still green. And when they're green, they're feeding the bulbs underneath. So if you want a beautiful show next year, you have to leave the leaves on your daffodils until they completely die back. All right, so uh, pollinator garden here. I need to deadhead these roses again, but look at that budlia. It smells amazing out here too. The budlia smells so, so good. We've got this apple tree, which I'm so excited about. Oh gosh, you guys, so many apples. And I did thin them um, and they're looking beautiful. The rose trellis that uh, I pruned back is looking really good. I'm really, really happy that I did that. Now we have a nice open space where we can walk in <laughs> and see the shady side of the pollinator patch. Um, this salvia won't really start blooming until later in the summer, but it is glorious when it does. Uh, we've got a few, a few nectarines, I'm sorry, plums left. This, it's been a wonderful plum harvest this year. They were so tasty. Ah, so lovely. I was so excited. Blackberries, they're real close. There's a few of them that are very close to harvest. Uh, blueberries, just about done. This apple tree has four apples on it two up here and two down on the other side that you can't really see. These guys don't have anything and that's fine. Uh, over in the big bed, we still have this mustard that just needs to come out at some point and I keep kind of forgetting. I just kind of 
forget that it's there. <laughs> but it is sowing seed, and that's actually a good thing because that seed will sprout. And I do want to um, plant this entire bed in mustard this summer, I mean this winter, uh, to uh, help fumigate it. Same thing with all the beds, they'll all get mustard. Uh, this bed, the beans, these are dried soup beans. We've got cow peas here and then mustard back there, looking pretty good. Um, and then our artichokes. So I'm letting these flower. These You wouldn't want to eat them at this stage, but the flower is purple and it's gorgeous. Um, and I do see a few more stalks that will have babies on them, but we're not going to harvest those this year. And I do see something, looks like something might have been eating on that one and definitely on this one. So I might have to provide this guy like a screened cloche to keep it safe for a while, let it size up. Okay, and then over here, we've got our squashes are still coming along. Tomatoes are looking better. I did, there's actually some fruit on some of them. Um, I did put another line of the Florida weave up. Our squashes are getting bigger. I have harvested a couple of eight ball squash off of this one, which is nice. Um, all this nigella, it was just sown self-seeded from last year when we grew flowers here and it's lovely, so I'm leaving it. <laughs> doesn't hurt anything. So you can see the squashes in the ground here are getting bigger. Some of them are setting fruit, which is very exciting. And I do need to come through and weed. This guy doesn't belong. Look at these seeds. Aren't they crazy? Little cur curly cues. But boy, do they travel on the wind. Yeah, so this is mostly squash in here and beans. And you can see the beans are getting big. I've been harvesting on those. They've been very, very delicious. Um, more squash, a few more tomatoes. This is an eryngium that self-sowed from last year. It's just one stem. I'll harvest it when it's ready, but it's not ripe yet. It's still green. Okay, more beans. Shiso. And then I planted tomatillos here. Um, I've never grown them before, but I was hoping we could do some uh, tomatillo salsa this year. So two tomatillos, uh, more beans, more squash, and some watermelon in here. And we do have a baby pumpkin there, which I cannot tell you how excited I am about that. <laughs> so excited. Corn, which is not as green as the other bed. So I am going to give everything in the whole garden a nice fish emulsion uh, spray tomorrow morning early. Um, still along here, I have space here if I wanted to put something in. This was charred and collards which have been harvested. More squashes. We've been getting some yellow squash off here. I've been picking them small and young because they're really delicate and tender that way. Peas are done so I need to pull them up, amend the soil, and then I'm going to put some um, yard-long beans on this trellis. And then back here we've got mostly passion fruit in here um, and then some nasturtiums. There were some peppers. They still are but they're not really doing much. Uh, this blueberry uh, just getting its, this is a much smaller blueberry, just getting its fruits going. Hi, baby girls. This bed struggles, and I think it just doesn't get enough sun. Um, so I'll have to start growing things here that uh, want morning shade and afternoon sun, which is going to be a challenge. I don't know how we're going to do that, but that's a watermelon right near. There was one here and apparently got eaten, so that's good to know. Uh, more beans in here. Again, I've been harvesting on these and we've got some runners up here, up this trellis. Elderberry still doing great. And our dahlia, resident dahlia diva. Um, this has been in this garden for a long time. And there's two other dahlias there. I don't even remember what varieties they are. They haven't come up yet. This is also a dahlia. These are cucumbers and they have been pumping them out this year. And I'm so grateful because I love cucumbers and the past couple years have been abysmal for cucumber production. But I mean, each plant is pump pumping out a lot of cucumbers. These are cucumbers too, but are not looking that great. I mean, some of, they were starting to flower. Yeah, a few flowers, but they're just not, you know, they're looking rough. These on the other hand, just deep green. So again, I think we've got a nitrogen issue here. I'm just gonna fish emulsion everybody and hope that fixes the problem. Well, that's it for this disjointed video today, but I do appreciate you hanging around and watching. Um, I hope that your gardens are going well and you're not dealing with any problems. I hope you're getting all the lovely, beautiful things you want out of your garden this year, including just the pleasure of being in it.
Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Have a wonderful time in your gardens, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.